Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group and check out this website also where you can find so many project ideas with live version, proper flow, diagram and APIs and documentation and all. So let's start with the video. So in this video, we are going to discuss the inline editing, right? So whenever we talk about uh, displaying information in the table, there are various scenarios where we have to do the CRUD operation in the table itself. So in that era, we use inline table editing. Fine. So APIs which we are going to use it from project project.jrsim.in and the CRUD operation which we are going to focus is department one. It has very small objects. We are going to focus it. Now there are two scenarios I'm going to concern. First, the normal CRUD operation and second, again with inline editing and the second is bulk update. How do we do the bulk update in case of inline table editing? Fine, so let's get started. So this is the component which I have created. Two components are there, inline CRUD and the inline bulk update. So these two components we are going to use. So first we have to make this API call. So we have the table. So obviously we need to show the data which we get from the API. So this is the API. Get parent department. If we click on try it out, execute, we get the records. See? So this API we need to integrate. So let's go to our .ts. Let me just close everything. So this is my component. So now in component itself, I'm going to create the API call because that is not the focus. So private HTTP colon client while practicing, you, you can create service and uh, you can write the API call over there. We need to implement the on init also. So implement on init, ng on init. We will create two functions to get all departments. So this dot HTTP dot get API call. Round bracket for get, we just need to pass the URL. So this is our URL. Whatever the data we get from the API, we need to subscribe to that. Fine. Now, instead of creating at any, we will create the interface. So these are the properties which we have. So let's create an interface quickly in the component itself. Export. Sorry. Export. Interface. What is it? Department. These are the fields which we have. So department ID will have a data type of number. Then we have department which will have a data type of string. Then department logo which will have a data type of again string. So we have created interface which consists three fields. Correct. Now instead of any we will put it now, uh, whatever the response we get it from this API, we need to st store it also. So we will create department list colon array of this. Correct. Let's initialize to empty. So this is the initial thing. And this function, we will call it on the ng on it. So on the page load, we will have this API call ready. And whatever the data we get from this API that we need to store it over here. So this dot department list is equal to res dot data because from my, my API, we get the object and in data property, we have the array. Fine. So basic thing we have done. Now, this array, we need to bind it to our HTML. Correct. So what things we have, we will change the heading also. First, let's say serial number. Then we have department name. Then we have logo. URL city and that we don't know. First, we just need an action column. Then we have four TD. So likewise, we will have four. Likewise, we will have four columns also. So here, normal ng4 I'm using star ng4. Doesn't matter if you are uh, using Angular 18 or not. The inline editing has nothing to do with the Angular version. With all version, it is going to be same. Let item of our array name. And we need the index also. So let SR is equal to index. In first TD, we will print the serial number. 
sr plus 1 then in remaining we will print the whatever the properties we have item dot so now you can see we have created interface so it is suggesting properly let's copy and here we have to show the logo let's save and check if we are able to see the data properly fine so now you can see data is visible so whatever the records uh, are there that are visible now now we will start with the basic now this is a normal table what if we have to convert this to an inline edit inline editing one so for that in the html rather than directly displaying the data we have to do create a text box over here so input type text and we can use ng model over here square bracket round bracket ng model now to ng model what we will pass the same for loop instance variable so item dot department name will go over here we will add class form hyphen control let's save now we will remove this interpolation same like that for department logo also we will do it let's remove the interpolation let's just format let's save so now you can see we have the text box and in that text box the data is also visible this is not actually inline editing yeah we can change it but it's just a start so one step is done now either in action we can now edit and the delete button so let's add that so in action in the last edit we will have two button first let's say it will be edit button and second button we will be having is for the delete one delete will have a danger class i max2 and it will be delete let's save so now you can see we have edit and the delete button so what ideally should happen at a time once i click on the edit then only this text box should be visible otherwise it will be a normal td fine so let's write a code for that now on click of edit so here we will create two div and here we will add an ng if star ng if now item the item variable instance variable dot is edit property we will use now this property is not present in the object so let's add it also just whenever we talk about inline editing we need an extra we need an extra property it won't come from the api but you can add it it will be boolean fine so if edit is true we will show the text box and vice versa so div star ng if the same way but it will be with the not so if edit is false we will have just the normal interpolation so that too with like this Now same, I will copy and paste it over here also. Just the property name will be changing. Department name, department name. Let's get rid of this. Let's save. So by default, it is not. Uh, by default, only interpolation is visible. Now on click of edit, we need to turn that flag for the particular record to true. This particular flag, we need to make it true. So let's write the event. So click on edit. For on edit, we need to pass current object so let's create this function to this function we are going to get the parameter item colon which is of data type single department and here what we need to do item dot is edit this flag we will make it true fine so on click of edit we have passed the current object and in that function in that function the particular field is edit property we are making it true so just see now how inline editing behaves. So if I click on edit for the second record, so see in it inline editing mode turned on, correct? Now, if I clicked on the edit, instead of edit and the delete button, I should have save and the cancel button. So let's write the code for that. How do we do? How do we know like inline editing mode is on? By checking that uh, variable only. So again, this variable, the same div I will copy over in the last edit. So if this variable is true, means we have to show save and the cancel button. So 
it will be save and cancel. Just like this with the not also. If it is not in the editable mode, we have to show the edit and the delete button. So not. So these two buttons will go over here. Instead of success, I will put it over here and here secondary button. So let's save. Now just pay attention. If I click on edit, you can see buttons are also changing. Now on click of cancel again, I need to make it back. Correct. So let's do that. On click of cancel. Let's create a function. Click on cancel round bracket. And we need to pass the object also. Which object we need to pass. Correct. So let's create this function. Same we are going to have the parameter also. And what we need to do. We just need to change this property to false. Let's save. Let's save. And let's try. So if I click on edit. The current row is in the editable mode. If I click on cancel, it is again, again coming back. But here you can face a problem. See, if I start changing it, okay, and again, if I cancel it, see that information stays the same, but it should not now because I clicked on cancel. So it should retain the original value. So now to handle this, we need to write some code. So assuming at a time only one row is going to be editable. So what we need to do, we need to create a separate variable okay so now here what we can say mm, current editable object with data type this department fine so when we click on the edit in this variable we are going to store the object so this dot this is equal to item still we are going to face the issue but let me explain it and once we click on cancel to this item means whatever the parameter we are getting we will assign it the old object the current objects let's try if it works or not so what we have done we have created extra variable once we click on edit that existing object we are storing it over here then if user changed that change is going to be in the array with that particular object fine but again if we cancel the old object we are going to store. Let's make it old object instead of current. That will make more sense and it will be easy to understand. Old edit. Old object. Fine. So now it will make sense. And whatever the current, whatever the old data was there that we are assigning back to the item. Let's try if it works or not. On click of edit, we are changing. And again, if we cancel, still it is not behaving. Why? Because when we pass this item to this object, it will hold a reference. So to detach that reference, what we can do, we will create a local variable. String obj, json dot stringify. We are detaching that connection from that ob array object to this old object. So this item, we need to pass it over here. Then again, we need to convert it back. New obj is equal to again json dot parse method. And what we need to pass this converted string object. So this is like we are detaching that reference and this new object, we are storing it over here. So by just adding these two lines, see it should work fine now. Now if I click on edit, if I change something and again, if I cancel, oh, still it is not behaving. Let's try. Let's try to edit and see what is happening. Let's add a debugger. So if I click on edit, I change the value. And again, if I cancel, did we add the debugger? Yeah. So on click, we added actually. Let's change it. Now on click of cancel, we can check what is the value that we old object is holding on click of cancel. So in old object, let's reload one more time. Now 
the reason I'm, uh, why I'm not directly explaining the same code because you are going to face the same issue so that you should be aware like why it is happening and what we have to do for that. So now the item we have got, that item we are storing into this old object. Right. So see over here. Now in the old object, we have the current object. Fine. Now if I edit uh, something, now if I click on cancel, so if you see the old object, you can see old object is there. But still, if I assign it back to the item, still it is holding the same. Because in the old object, we had the previous data. But still, why it is behaving? Because we are assigning the whole object. Now, instead of whole object, if we try to assign it the property by property, na, so then it will work. Department name is equal to like this. And logo also we will try. And here also department logo. Then we have item dot I department ID we need. Fine. Now if we check, it should work fine. So these are the various scenario which we have to consider when we do the inline editing. Fine. If I change now and if I cancel, you can see old value we gone. This is how it behaves. Fine. Now in on click of edit, instead of save, we should get update button button because we are in the update mode, correct? So instead of save, it will be update. Fine. Now let's write a quick event on update and we need to pass the item. So this item, we will pass it over here. Now let's create this function. On click of update, we need to hit our API. So let's check the API also. There it is, update department. So this is the API which we have to use. So we need, no, it's a post API only. So we need to hit this API. Let's write the normal API code. So I'm just copy pasting. Instead of get, it will be post and URL will be update department. Let's copy. So this will go over here. Remaining API will be same. And since it is a post API, we need to pass the object. Now, while calling this update function from the HTML, we are passing the object, correct parameter, so that we will get it over here. That too, with what type of data department. And this item, we will pass it over here as a parameter. And if result dot result property is true, we will say alert department updated something message whatever we have to show or if there is an error we will show the error and from api side only we will get the error in result property message five let's try now just pay attention to the network tab also why it's behaving slow let me just close it Something is wrong or what? Let me just check console. Nothing error is also there. Why page is not loading? Now it loads. Fine. So on the page load, we have this API. Fine. Now, oh, one more thing we forgot. So once we do the update, once the update is success, again, we need to load the updated pages, updated records. So for that, we will call this API over here. So that we will be sure like records up record is updated or not. Now, APA call is taking time. Fine. So on the page load, we have the one APA call to get the data. Now, if I click on edit, you can see update button is there. Instead of art, I will write art department, DEPT. Now on click of update, see update call is there. Let's check the payload. So see, just the name is we have changed. API call is in progress. Why it's taking so much time? Let it success. Once it's success, again, get a department API call will be there. Still, it is in progress only. Why it is taking time? Wait. 
we should not take this much time might be problem with my network let's try again on click of arts that api call didn't success right so that's why we are able to see the art only now if i click on update yeah so see department updated once we click on okay again api call is success and that again we are in the read only mode fine so this is how you do the update now how do we do in case of new let's say we have to create a new record also so for that we will add a new button over here fine let's see that now so here again i will create a row column structure i will add a button Let's see. Now on click of add, we need to add an empty row over here. Fine. So let's add a click function over here. Add new. So see again, so many scenarios are there. One by one we are covering. So now we are creating, uh, now we are doing the operation for the create new record. So once we click on the add new, what we need to do? We are doing inline editing. So in the table only, we should have one empty record. We don't have any extra form. So we need to push empty object to our array and then that to at the top. So we will use unship method. So this is our array. So this dot unshipped. What we need to pass is empty object. So that to with department ID with ID zero. Then department logo with empty value then department name with empty value and is edit flag as true because we need that to be editable correct so is edit is it, sorry true fine so what we are doing in the array we are adding one more property at the top with empty object so see on click of add i think we didn't save this let's try see you're getting it but update button should not be there now because we are trying to create new record instead of update we should get save button so again we need to write the code for that so how do we know like we are in the update mode or, or we are trying to create the new record if item id is zero correct so this button i will copy paste and again ng will be over here so if item dot department id equal to zero if it is zero we have to show or not equal to zero we have to show update button and same vice versa case if equal to zero we have to show save button save on new create let's create this function as well And we will get the parameter just like the same function will be there. Just the URL will be different. The same parameter will be over here. Why we are getting error? Did we miss something? Let's copy paste. Instead of update department, let's see the API to create new record, add new department. Let's copy the URL. This will go over here. Department created. Let's save. Let's see if it works or not now. Fine. So currently we have 39 records. Now, if I click on add new, we got the new record editable in mode. Let's try test. 22 test 22 dot logo something you id i'm passing now you will you are able to see save button because we are in the new mode now if i click on save add new department api is calling and save is also success but i think from api i am sending the latest record at the end so last record is available over here 
this is how we do the inline editing and delete is the same way what we know on click of delete you can just show that confirm box if okay you can make the api call now if you see i click on add one record got added again if i cl click on add again two records got added right so again based on the need if you need to have multiple at a time, you can add multiple records or you should have multiple editing options. You can do that. Or you can again write the code to restrict like at a time only one record should be in the editable mode. That also you can do. Obviously, based according to various projects, there will be multiple need and the scenarios like that you will cover. But whenever you talk about inline editing, so these are the all possible scenarios it will come. So I have taken the same example what code you need to write in the HTML because we have seen step by step what you need to change conditions. All these conditions you need to cover, then only your inline editing will work fine. This is basic. With this code, it will work fine. So that's it. If you are new, please do like and subscribe. Thank you.